Standard 7, Subject Geography, Chapter 7, Soils Dear students, we all know about soils. But have we thought about what are the different constituents of soils? Well, inorganic mineral matter, organic matter, that is microorganisms and macroorganisms, water and air, together constitute the soil. Let us consider the soil in more detail. Look at the figure. You will see at the bottom bedrock, above it parent material, then the subsoil followed on top, topsoil and finally the organic layer on top. So, the parent rock, the climate of the region, the biotic material, the slope of the land and time are factors that influence soil formation. So let us learn more about factors necessary for soil formation. First, parent rock. Remember that the parent rock in a region is an important factor in soil formation. Depending on the hardness of the rock and the climate of the region, the rock gets weathered. The rock turns into powdery material, which further turns into earthy material. The second factor necessary for soil formation is regional climate. This is also an important factor influencing soil formation. Weathering of the rock is the first step in the process of soil formation. The process of weathering depends on the climate of the region. The climate decides the intensity of weathering. That is why one and the same type of rock gives rise to different types of soils when the rock is exposed to different climates. The third factor which is very important is the biotic material. The weathering of the rock turns them into powdery material. But this powdery material is not soil. To turn such powdery material into soil, it is necessary that the biotic material gets mixed into it. Now what is biotic material? The biotic material comes from the decomposition of the remains of the plants and animals in that region. The vegetal litters, roots of plants, remains of animals etc. get decomposed due to water. Microorganisms and certain other organisms help decompose the dead remains of organic materials. The biotic material thus produced gets mixed into the soils and is called humus. If the proportion of humus in the soil is greater, the soil becomes fertile. The process of decomposition by living organisms takes place continuously. Nowadays, production of vermicompost is undertaken on a large scale. Try to understand the process of producing vermicompost or compost. Production of compost needs sufficient period of time and elements like organic waste, water, heat, etc. Now let's learn about the fourth factor which is time. Soil formation takes time. Soil formation is a natural and slow process. It needs a very long period of time. To form a 2.5 cm thick layer of topsoil, it takes thousands of years. From this, you may understand that soils are invaluable. Okay, so soil formation is a very slow process and a natural one. So we have to value the soil. An important component of the living world on the earth is plants. For the production and growth of plants, soil is indispensable. Means we cannot go without soil for the growth of plants. They provide support to plants. Vegetation is abundant in the regions that have fertile soils. Example, the equatorial regions. However, in the areas where the soils are not fertile, vegetation is scanty. Example, in the deserts, you will see very less vegetation. And where there is a shortage of soil, vegetation is not seen. 
example in the polar areas do favorable climate availability of abundant water and sunlight are necessary for the growth of a plant these alone are not sufficient fertile soils favor plant growth so fertile soils are very important when man realized that sowing of seeds in the soil leads to the growth of plants and yields crops he started using soil as a resource gradually he realized that the fertile soils along the river beds give higher yields hence he settled in the valleys and started living there in groups this led to the rise of ancient river valley civilization example the indus civilization for the growing population man started producing greater amount of food crops there emerged competition among people to discover fertile lands and settle there food crops fruits and flowers are produced according to the type of soils the local agricultural produce determines the staple diet of the people the regions where soils are not arable need to fulfill their food requirements through import means there are places where food cannot be grown because the soil is not that fertile for example countries like saudi arabia qatar oman etc so they fulfill their requirements by importing food from china india and the usa etc now let us look, have a look at figure 7.2 on page 41 of your textbook you have studied the major soil types of maharashtra on the basis of the soil's color texture formation process thickness of layers etc we can divide the states soils into five major types so in the map have a look at the index you will be able to see the five types of soils that we find on the maharashtrian plateau so in the state of maharashtra we have five different types of soil we are going to study them one at a time so the first one is the coarse soil second black soil shown in dark gray laterite soil alluvial soil and finally yellow brown in the hilly regions so the first one coarse soil this soil type is a result of weathering and low rainfall this soil can be found in the hill tops of the western part of the plateau example ajanta and mahadev hills the proportion of humus is negligible in this soil next we have regar or black soil it is found in the areas of medium rainfall in the valleys and alluvial plains of river basins two types of this soil are found dark black soil is found in the western part of the deccan plateau while medium black soil is found in the eastern part that is vidarbha though it is black in color proportion of organic components is less in the soil the third one is the laterite soil this type of soil is found in the coastal belt of konkan to the west of the sayadris and in the east of vidarbha in areas of very heavy rainfall the eroded rock gets washed away in a large quantity as a result the parent rock lies bare open the iron in the rock reacts with the oxygen in the air and causes chemical reaction this gives the reddish orange color to the soil which is thus formed next we have alluvial soil of the coastal strip majority of the rivers flowing in the konkan region are short and flow with great speed therefore the alluvium brought by them gets deposited at the mouth of the rivers so 
in the konkan area you will see alluvial type of soil in the coastal stream yellow brown soil these soils are found in the areas of extreme rainfall they are not very fertile therefore they are not very useful for agriculture now let us study about soil ero erosion and degradation a layer of soil top layer of soil gets removed due to wind or water this means that the soil gets eroded running water climate and diversity in physiography are the reasons of soil erosion the soil quality may get lower due to certain reasons this is called degradation of soil to obtain the higher agricultural yield chemical fertilizers insecticides weedicides etc are used the excessive spraying of chemicals and use of chemical fertilizers leads to soil degradation excessive irrigation draws the soils from the soil upwards and makes the soil saline and then unproductive you can see in this picture due to excessive use of chemicals the residues remain in the soils for many years they become a threat to the existence of microorganisms in the soils it leads to the lowering of the humus content in the soil and the plants do not get micronutrients if the ph of the soil gets disturbed it is a sign of soil degradation now what is ph soil ph is a measurement of the alkalinity or acidity of the soil normal ph of soil varies from 3 to 9 so if the ph value gets disturbed it leads to soil degradation next you are going to study about soil conservation just as you have learned about how to conserve water water conservation soil also needs to be conserved so considering the importance of soil it is necessary to conserve it it is necessary to protect the fertile soils of farmlands from getting washed due to rains soil conservation includes the works like construction of embankments and planting trees on them you can see in the image here how embankments are done and trees a small trees are planted plants are planted over there to reduce soil erosion construction of gully plugs against the steep slopes you can see in the image such works are taken up by the department of soil conservation planting trees can also control the velocity of the wind this helps reducing the erosion of soil by wind the plant roots hold the soil and this also reduces the erosion of soil under soil conservation the continuous contour trenches cct are constru constructed along the slopes construction of such trenches at different height checks the velocity of water running along the slopes and hence reduces soil erosion the water arrested in these trenches percolates into the ground so this way there are many uh, steps or development programs undertaken by the government so that we can conserve soil recently the government has launched the scheme called jal yukt shivar under this scheme works like construction of farm bunds arresting waters of small streams connecting the streams etc are being carried out on a large scale it is advisable to reduce the excessive use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides if organic manures vermicompost compost are used regularly it helps maintain the ph balance increase the proportion of humus and retain the fertility of soil keeping the farmland fallow for some period and cultivating different crops alternatively is important to help retain the fertility of soils so students we have completed the chapter which gives you a detailed information about soils hope you have understood this chapter do read this chapter from your textbook
and try to understand the concept with reference to the diagrams and maps given in your textbook. Stay safe, keep learning and thank you.